I really, honestly, I, as I was studying this and I began to study this even before I uh, left for Wisconsin camp, and, and I was just studying it, but it was one of those things that you study, but you never really intended on speaking on it. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like God was saying, this is, this is what I want for this Sunday, and I want to entitle it this. And you ought to write this down somewhere in your Bible just so that you would never forget. And the title is this, Emancipation from Compromise. Emancipation from Compromise. Just in case you don't know what the word in emancipation is. Uh, normally I have points that I put up here so you can jot them down. But with camp being tomorrow, a lot of the computer equipment is up in Excelsior. So you're just going to have to listen intently and maybe get the CD. Emancipate means this. It's a verb, which means it's an action. It means, it means you have to do this. It's, it's not a person, place, or thing. It's, a, it's an action. And emancipate means this. If you would look it up in the dictionary, it means to free from restraint, influence, or the like. Mm -hmm. Number two is to free as in a slave from bondage. Number three is it's a Roman or a civil law to terminate parental control over. And its original uh, origin comes from the, from the Greek word emancipatus, which means to be freed from control. Mm -hmm. that's, where the, that's what the word emancipation or emancipate means. To be free from compromise. To be from free from the restraint of compromise. To be free from the control of compromise. Now, Hold on, tell your neighbor to hold on, because at the end of this, you're going to be blessed. <laughs> tell them, because I don't want to get up and be out, because it gets a little rocky right in here. But how many know sometimes you got to get to the rocky road to get to the ice cream? Amen. So we're going to go through the rocky road first, but I promise you ice cream. Now, <laughs> as I was studying this, this thought kept coming to my mind. With tomorrow starting a week of camp, and... And I was telling the praise and worship team this, that oftentimes you will hear it said after camp, and I myself have even said this, I am guilty of saying this. As you watch young people, and they come back and they seem to be on fire, they seem to be uh, just bubbling over, and as adults, as a church as a whole, sometimes we have the fault of sitting back and saying, maybe not with words, but in our minds, we'll say, we'll see how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. it, it probably was just a physical high. It probably was just an emotional high. But let's just see if in six weeks they're still on as fire as they are right now. How, how many will just say, I'm guilty of that? Yeah, come on. I, I've been guilty of that. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes within ourselves as a church body, we will say this, well, I guess it really wasn't real fire, but God kind of quickened my heart. And he said, it's real fire, but fire has to be allowed to burn. Right, that's right. Come on, come on. If you think about natural fire and how it is, it has to be fueled and it has to be kindled and it has to be breathed upon. Right. For in order for the continuation of burning. Because if you start a fire and then you never tend to it, or you smother it out, the fire and the flame will go out. So I pose the question, and I pose that every time a, a young person or an adult gets on fire for God, that it's a real fire, it's a real touch, but sometimes us as the church has not allowed it to burn. Right. Come on. Maybe, and I was telling, I was telling the praise and worship team, you know, sometimes God needs a fan blower. Maybe God yeah. has ordained you. Right. When you start to see that flame, go over there and just start fanning it a little bit. Come on, I don't want this to go out, so yeah. I'm going to encourage you a little bit. Maybe you're both supposed to be the kindling, and, I, and you just come and you say, I'm going to touch you with some of my fire because I don't want your fire to go out. Amen. That's good. But I guarantee you, you'll never see Jesus say, I need you to be the blanket, to just control that fire right. a little bit. We don't do things that way in our church. Right. That's good. Nowhere in this scripture are you going to tell me that Jesus has called you to be the blanket. Well, I wish them young people would just stop. 
I don't like standing that long. <laughs> Come on. Whoever is not the blanket ought to be saying amen because that's not me. Amen. That's right. So I want to encourage us to emancipate ourselves from compromise because fire must be in an atmosphere that allows it to burn. If you remember a few weeks ago, I talked to you on the subject where Mary, who was a representation of the second generation, became pregnant and she came and found the older Elizabeth, the wiser Elizabeth, and when Mary came in and began to testify of what God had done for her, what was in Elizabeth, the first generation, began to leave. And then Elizabeth then pronounced awesome things over Mary's life. It's a symbol of two generations coming together right. as one body. Right. So I want us to begin to prepare ourselves and say, God, I understand you're looking for a people that just want your presence, that just want your glory, yes. that just want you. Yes. I want the real Jesus. Amen. I want the real Jesus. Amen. I, you can have fake Christianity if you want but I want the real thing. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't want just religion, because religion never changed my heart. That's right. That's right. Tradition, <laughs> as, as good as tradition can be, tradition never changed my life. That's right. I'm jumping around here a little bit, but you have to understand, I, because I have grown up in Pentecost, and my father was a minister, and I've been in this thing all my life, and I, I say this with all humbleness, I have understand the feeling of what it feels like to praise God here, but don't give him nothing in my house. Right, right. I know what it's like to put on a face and smile and act holy and act happy, but really there's turmoil yes. inside. And religion and just church as yes. usual will not break that. Yes. But it takes That's right. a real Jesus Amen. in order to get right to the depths of where someone lives. Amen. That it's just not oh, a mask oh, of happiness. Yes. It's a true yes. joy yes. of yes. happiness that yes. comes from the innermost Amen. parts yes. of your being. How many's with me and say, I want the yeah. real Jesus? Amen. Yeah. Amen. All the other stuff, if everybody else wants to argue about whatever about religion.